So Brian, just season as a whole for you, um, about what you expected. I mean, obviously without Mike, you're getting a, a considerably more time. So yeah. How have you adjusted? Well, I'm definitely hurting for Mike. Um, I didn't expect this to happen at all, but like given the way that things have gone, I'm just trying to make the most of my opportunity. And as far as like what's happening for our team, I don't think anyone expected this to happen. Uh, for the season to start this way, but there's still five games left, and um, I think we can, as a team, come together and turn this thing around and make this a really good season for us. You talk to Mike at all? Yeah, I, uh, I messaged him after his surgery. He said it went well, and then I think he's uh, he's hurting pretty good, but um, I've had that surgery before, and I think the first couple of days is the worst part, but he said he's feeling better, so. Anything offensively that you didn't expect coming in for yourself again from the position? Has this been exactly what you thought it would be? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say um, my expectations kind of met up with reality and what we've done this year. So, I mean, I'm I'm pleased with our offense. I think we have a good a good scheme in place. We have the right coaches to to coach it, and then any mishaps that we've had, I'd place more of the blame on the players than anyone else. Um, I think we, it comes like at the end of the day, it just comes out down to us to to execute and do our job and put points on the board because we've proved that we can do that. We just need to do it every week. It's about being consistent. So, what is it like to go into the transfer portal with you know high expectations and then go through the first half of the season and, and not have them develop as you had pictured it? Yeah, I mean. It wasn't what I expected, but I don't think anything ever is. And um, I think it's just testing our resilience and, like, how far we can go. Because I think that's easy. I mean, you go down a couple games, and then you lose a couple players to injury, and then some guys are like, oh, like, screw the rest of the season. They might just give up. But then I think the really tough programs with the, the good culture, I think they find a way – to finish strong and then um, get themselves into, into a nice bowl game and win that bowl game and then gear up for the next season because we have a lot of good players in this team. We have a lot of young talent that's going to come back next year. Um, I won't be here, obviously. I'm out of time, but um, unfortunately. But, um, no, the future is bright. We just need to perform up to our own expectations of ourselves and what uh, others expect of us and um, just do it every week. Team. Right now, there's a lot of social media bad talk and, yeah. and the like, which you, which you would expect there after yeah. losing a game like that. Uh, uh, how, do you, how do you check that out? How do you how do you say that's the fans? They're mm -hmm. you know they pay their money, but they're not in the locker room. Well, I just I just stay off Twitter to be honest. I think that's the easiest. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not really a Facebook guy. I don't know what happens on there. So unless someone comes up to me and tells me something. I don't really know, and I don't, I don't watch TV. Like I don't have cable, so it's like I, not, none of it really comes to me. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's a uh, no. That's a good way to shut up the noise if you just don't read it or hear any of it. So, like uh, after the Texas Tech game, uh, Coach Brown was talking about how this team has kind of been like a roller coaster. Yeah, uh, obviously the Baylor game you're up here. After the Texas Tech game, it's a different story. Uh, you know, who knows what could happen Saturday against TCU. I mean, if you're back up there, it's a good story again. Um, emotionally, has it been a roller coaster as well for, for, for players to, uh, you know, one week it's here, one week it's here, and next week it's, you know, could be back. Is that difficult to deal with at all? I would say so. I mean, I've had coaches call it an emotional roller coaster where you start off the season really excited, first game doesn't go your way, you're down here. You get your first win, you're back up here. I think the biggest thing that we need to learn from this is that when you do have success, you can't be complacent. You need to attack every week like you just had a bad loss, in my opinion. Like, that's how hungry you need to be every every single week. And that's how detailed you need to be in your preparation. And um, given what happened this past weekend, I think we can all be better, uh, for sure. And... Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's searching for answers on how to stop that. And I'd say the easiest answer is just to treat it like 
you didn't have success and you could always be better because no one's ever perfect in a football game. You could always be better. So I think it's that pursuit of perfection that can get you to where you want to go instead of being on the, ro- uh, the roller coaster, like you said. Well, that's going to be kind of my next question. When it is like that, yeah. uh, is it hard to figure out, you know, well, who, who are we really, uh, yeah. so to speak? Yeah, because, I mean, you sit in one game, we'll put up almost 50 points, and then another game, it'll be like, what are we doing, you know? So I think it's just not being – like if you can go in and be like, okay, I'm not going to be complacent. Last week was good, but I could be better. And then how do I do that? And then work with your coach and then just work on something new every week and hopefully you don't have to be correct on the same thing twice. And then um, you just do that every week. As a veteran of the team, have you and other vets said anything directly? Was there any, not to say closed door meeting, but that type of galvanizing type of thing, or is it just kind of everything understood that hey, it's a roller coaster, but you know we know we can be better, so you don't need to vocally say it as mm-hmm. much. There's been like there hasn't been like a players only meeting or like a closed door meeting. I think everything's understood. Uh, we have enough experience in this team where even the older guys we know that. Saturday wasn't good enough. We need to play better. And it can't just be this Saturday. It has to be every Saturday from here on out. And, yeah, it's it's definitely understood. But that needs to actually happen. Did you do anything for a national tight end day the other day? Like, celebrate that in any way? want to get you a fun one. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my coach, Coach Reagan, he uh, received a package. I don't know who sent it. But we all got matching shirts, all the tight ends. So... Um, I thought that was kind of ironic because uh, National Tight Ends Day was on my birthday. So I thought that was kind of cool. Brian, you mentioned some of the young tight ends. Evaluate some of those guys. What have you seen? I mean, start with, with Traylon and go down through the freshman. Okay. So Traylon, I think he's ahead of where a lot of, a lot of people would expect him to be. Um, he's gotten a lot more playing time than I think even he expected to have this year. But I think he's handled it well. Um yeah, I think he's going to continue to develop. He has the the size already. I think he's always had the size to play at the at this level, and um, he's a great kid. He's really smart, and he cares a lot about our team. So I think he's going to be um, a good a good staple in the tight end room for years to come. Um, Victor Victor Wickstrom, I think he's pound for pound one of the strongest guys in our team. I think that he just needs to continue to learn football and develop because he's from Sweden. So it's a lot different than like where I played in Texas, you know? So I think once he puts everything together, I think he's going to be really dangerous and he's going to be a phenomenal player. Uh, Will Dixon, he just got here in in August actually, and he was a late addition to our program, but he's going to be really good as well. He has elite size. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have to like look up to talk to him. So he's he's well over six five, I'm pretty sure. So um he's he's pretty fast, he's got good ball skills, and he's smart, great person, so I think he'll be really good. Um Theo Graybull, he'll be really good. Um great ball skills, great person, he's good. And then Trace, Trace Weitzel, he's good. I know he's been here for a couple of years, but he just needs to continue to develop. So I mean, there's no there's no shortage of talent in our room. We just need to keep keep building. Because in my opinion, we have one of the um, like tighter rooms on the team. It's just the nature of playing tight end. So no, I think we'll I think we'll be good. Anything else, Brian? Okay, sir. Thank you.